All right, so this is going to be another movie review. This one's called Baker, 1980. Okay, and that's three out of five stars. I thought it was all right. Um, it's way overrated, though. It's gets a 7.2 out of 10 on IMDb. I'm giving it a little bit lower rating because... Uh, I believe that the punishment should fit the crime, but in this case, they decided to do a movie about some corrupt prison in the Deep South that was uh, violating the Constitution by uh, imposing cruel and unusual punishment, to say the least. And um, so you've got that extreme of it, and then you've got the other extreme of Robert Redford, who's sort of like a a do-gooder prison reformer who doesn't believe that the punishment should fit the crime so he's on the polar opposite of the spectrum there and uh, he becomes prison warden he pretends to be a prisoner and then he he emerges out of some kind of uh, Morgan Freeman altercation to become the prison warden that was kind of bizarre but um, pretty grimy prison I like the the terrible uh, prison conditions in this one kind of uh, are unsettling. It's got, you got worm in the food, and uh, prisoners get beaten with the, with the belt. And, uh, prisoners get killed. Prisoners get buried in a unmarked graveyard somewhere near the prison. Uh, so one of the prisoners decides to tell the reformer, the great reformer Robert Redford <laughs> about these uh, graves starts digging them up and uh, finding bones with their uh, bones that have been side sawed off and, um, that's a lot of prison corruption uh, stealing prisoners food and uh, selling it to the uh, the supermarket at a low price that kind of thing um, there's a lot of stuff going on in this film that makes the you know, prison look bad and even at the at the end you kind of get the idea that it was a really bad prison <laughs> during the 70s I guess the actual story that it was based on took place in 1977 corrupt prison officials uh, similar to what we have here in California I guess I don't know I violated the uh, curfew last night I actually stopped at the bank for about a minute to deposit my cash tip $20 and, um, I didn't see cop car anywhere but I did uh, order my um, my hair clipper online can't even go to uh, Whole Foods tonight because of the uh, the curfew. I'm not going to make it back by by seven when they close. But um, so I can't get my hand milk. But I'll just order a uh, regular vitamin D fortified. We like vitamin D here. The vitamin D fortified cow milk at Safeway. So I'll just buy that instead. Uh, after I drop him off, the Safeway is right down the street from where he lives. And uh, pretty crazy stuff. They say that the protesters are uh, doing a great thing by uh, going outdoors after they told us to stay indoors. So uh, I guess the genie's out of the bottle. The lockdown's over. Can all go outside now, provided that we protest against the uh, police brutality that has been going on for a lot of years. And all of a sudden, somebody started paying attention to it. And nevertheless, uh, it's a huge distraction from the coronavirus, and uh, nobody's talking about coronavirus anymore. It's all about this guy who uh, who had a knee on his neck for nine minutes. Somebody caught it on video, and then the media 
started uh, going nuts right about it. So that's the situation here. Uh, I gotta, I gotta leave in about three minutes, so I better uh, put his noodles in the fridge so I can eat it later. <laughs> I fixed a pretty good pasta t tonight, and uh, he didn't even take one item for his from his snack bag. Is he gonna bring it in the car? <laughs> a snack bag and a sprite. Anyways, um, not a great flick. I'm not going to say highly recommended or check it out. But it does have 15,377 ratings on it. So it's somewhat of a known film, pro probably because of Robert, Robert Redford and his uh, appeal on camera. But um, anyways... A cinema review. Uh, what do I got coming down the pike here? I got uh, let's see. Let's see if I can pull it up because I think I have a, a cannon flick kind of uh, getting out of the. Uh, M.M. at Walsh section of my queue, thank God. M.M. at Walsh plays the uh, the corrupt businessman. He's like a, a lumber guy. He's getting free labor um, from the prison. Robert Redford calls it slave labor. <laughs> slave labor. Which I guess technically is correct since they're not getting paid for their work. I wonder how they get money for food and stuff. That part wasn't explained. Um, and then I Walsh did the roof and it caved. And uh, the prison didn't have uh, insurance. So Robert Redford was pretty ticked off about that. So he's getting in a fight with the, uh, the prison board because they're more uh, tolerant of the uh, corruption brutality that's going on in this prison that they're almost enablers in a way so I got Missing in Action which is a Chuck Norris uh, 1984 canon flick then I got Wider Wilder Napalm uh, with um, what's his name Warren Beatty and uh, Deborah Winger from uh Cannery Row? Are you kidding me? Wilder Napalm. So you got Deborah Winger, Dennis Quaid. Why did I say uh, Warren Beatty? I've been watching a lot of Warren Beatty movies. It's Den Dennis Quaid and uh, Deborah Winger. Wilder Napalm. It's a uh, romantic comedy with uh, M. Emmett Walsh. So that's my last M. Emmett Walsh, hopefully, that I, that I have to endure. Probably watch Missing in Action first just because I want to avoid the romantic comedy. But that's the end of my review. I, I got to get out of here now. Later.